here's an example, and I've got a couple of examples to come up with, and then I'll show you the practices of, of how I get to one. This is a PE range of the construction sector. I did it in September 2010. Um, and really what I'm doing with the PE range, and the blue line is, is the index value, the reddish line is the, the PE, and then the green line. What I'm trying to do is get that green line, which gives me an indication of where are we finding it when it's kind of cheapish. Now we can see from around 2004, late 2004, uh, construction really started to rally. What we're looking here is almost a sense of, of value investing. We want to find the quality, we want to buy it when it's cheap. So that was construction. We moved to a, a better one perhaps, which is uh, Pick and Pay, did this one in August 2010. We've got uh, 12 years of data sitting here in Pick and Pay, and what we get is a nice clear band, and those two red lines are broadly telling us around 15 and lower, pick and pay is cheap, around 18 and higher, it starts to become expensive. How I look to use this, step back, first find the stocks I like. What are those, those boring stocks, those blue chips, those stocks that you want to hold, and, and, and you know, kind of the Warren Buffett style, I call them my death to us part until one of us dies, me or maybe the company. What I'm then looking to do, identify the stock, now I want to get it when it's cheap. Uh, price is nothing. Price doesn't tell you a heck of a lot, but the price earnings does. So we can see in pick and pay, there's been one, two, three, four, five, a big window there in 03, six, seven opportunities in the last 12 years when we could pick up pick and pay at what has typically been the low level of its price earnings. Uh, another example we've got here is SPA. Again, just looking at the PE, we haven't got the price on. We can tell the SPA, and here we're going back to only 05, that there's been one, really only two, maybe if you want to be generous, we can say that November 08, we could say there's been three windows where it's been cheap. And maybe in the case of SPA, in this instance, this isn't a chart that I took, a, a user on Ticket Talk put it up. Um, he did a moderate line as well, i.e. the middle line as well, which would have given a lot more. I suppose in a sense, you want to buy below that moderate. You want to say, well, let's not buy on the top side, let's buy at the bottom side. Cheap is great, but in truth, if you're buying on the bottom half of the equation, you're still looking good. You're still, you're still in a good position. So step back a moment, PE price earnings ratio. Uh, key divider of a price earnings is price divided by either earnings per share or headline earnings per share. Obviously price changing on a daily basis, headline earnings changing every six months as numbers come out. Typically considered to be an indication of cheapness. Now, that's a wonderful concept, but there's, there's uh, what is cheapness? It, it, what we're trying to look for is that value. That's really it. We're saying this is a top stock, what we want to buy is when it's looking at best price. We, want to, we, don't, we don't want to overpay. We don't want to buy at the top of the market. We want to buy when that quality is offering us good value. And the market offers that to us. Not frequently, as you saw from the other charts. It doesn't come in often, but it's saying to us, hang on, it does sometimes give it to us. And that's part of investing. It's that waiting. It's saying, I like it, but at current price, not so. And in truth, Maybe it's 13 Rand today, but it's expensive, and in a year's time it's 15, but it's cheap, because it's not about the price. It's what do you get? What are the earnings that you get for that PE, that, 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 that stock that you buy? Uh, two buts that are imp important. Price earnings relative to what? I can't compare a price earnings on gold fields to Standard Bank. I've got completely different industries, businesses, methods, etc. I either do it relative to its peers, so pick and pay and shop right as an example. I would do it relative to its sector. So maybe a, a resource stock to the Resi 20. Or I would do it relative to itself, which is really what we're looking at this evening. So how we do it, but important, one measure of cheap. Uh, there, there, there's a peg ratio. Um, we will get presenters who will look at other ways of cheap. Uh, and the smart word for cheap, of course, is value. I mean, you're looking to buy value. Uh, the best known internationally, Warren Buffett. Locally, probably Alan Gray, really, really no, known as that. So that range gives us a clue as what the cheap, expensive PE is for a stock. You know, 
in banks, it's typically between 11, 8 and 11. So the 8 is cheap, the 11 is expensive. Um, on the market as a whole, it's typically around uh, it's 12 is the average, so your 10s are cheap, your 14 to 16s are expensive. So it gives us that, that nice range, and as I said, you can do it in the stock, you can do it in the sector. The problem with doing it in the sector is finding that data. And I, you know, chat to the guys at Profile Media, they might be able to provide it for us. But certainly, as I said, finding it for a sector is, is a challenge. Finding it for a stock is easy. Uh, I'm using standard online share trading. They're my broker. You go to the, 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 the page, which is their quote page, and you click on price history, and they show you this. And they say, we're going to give you data, one year, five year, 10 year, or all data. You can go take a particular period. I say, fine. Give me everything you got, and then they'll put it onto screen for you. But I say, nope, I would rather you save it into Excel. So they basically download it into Excel for me. Now I've got all that data. What do they give me? They give me date, obviously, the closing, the high, the low price for that particular day. They give me the volume. They give me the number of deals for the day, the trade value, dividend yield, earnings yield, and price earnings ratio. Much of that I'm not needing at all. So in truth, I delete all but date, price, and PE. Those are the ones that I want. Quick point on this. Sometimes the PE, when you have it in Excel, it's got a percentage next to it. You can't actually use it because Excel looks at that as, as text, not as a number, in which case I take the earnings yield and divide it into 100, and that will then give me a PE as an earnings number. So I delete everything I don't want. What you'll also find is occasionally you get zero values. Now, here we're getting zero values, but that's because I took this data during the course of today. So we get the zero values. But sometimes the data is dirty. We're sitting here with 14, almost 14 years of data. There are going to be days that are missing, not so much a price, but certainly a, a, a PE might be missing. So what I then go and do is I just do a quick sort by, by the PE cells, and I delete all the ones that are zero. Now, that means your data is not pure, but in truth, you've got the day before, you've got the day after. Missing that one day is absolutely not going to be a problem. On this point, of course, what can you also do? Well, you could do one for dividend yield. So instead of doing a PE range, or maybe as well as doing a PE range, you could also do, you could also do the, 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 the further of doing a dividend yield at the same time. Quick question I see coming up. Difference between using earnings per share as opposed to headline earnings per share? It's a good question. Unfortunately, the good questions are often difficult, and that, that, that adds some challenges to them. The short answer, earnings per share is simply earnings. Headline earnings takes out extraordinary activities, things that are, are, are one-offs, and one-offs might be two earnings. Uh, First Rand came out with a trading update today. They're going to be plus 200%. In truth, much of that is going to be because of the unbundling of some of their assets. So to my mind, that's a one-off. It's not a true. So that's why headline earnings per share, HEPs as we call it, I think is a better number. So if, I, if I've got a choice, I'll take HEPs. Most of the time when you're being offered data, you're going to be offered data that is HEPs using your price earnings in, in, in that space. Back to the presentation. Clean your data. You've now got it in Excel. And then you go and you make a line chart. And I say that nice and easy. I suppose it depends how much of an expert you are in, in, in terms of, of, of uh, Excel. To me personally, I find Excel uh, difficult. Um, it, 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 it can drive me crazy sometimes. So I, to be honest, had to make this line chart about three times today um, before it actually came out and looked any good. Uh, but I did get it in the end. And, and it, it, it took a bit of fiddling. And I'm particularly, I'm using the new 2010, in truth, I'm typically used to, in fact, 2003, which makes it that a little bit more difficult. But nonetheless, it's there, it's available, uh, might need some play. If you're an expert, easy. If you're not, Google is your friend, it's certainly in my case. So here's the chart I created today using Bulletin. I bought closing price. I got the price earnings, as you can see there. We're looking from a period August 1997 through to close of business yesterday. We can certainly see the price, which is referenced to left-hand side, uh, being from around 20 Rand in that period, uh, peaked at about 320 and currently trading just below 300. You can obviously see that crash from 2008, where it went down to around 140 or 120 or there's about. 
Stocks done spectacularly well, even if even taking that crash into account, but as an investor, where would you have been buying? That's where PE comes in and helps us a lot. There I've taken what I would call my low range for PE. Now, how did I get my low range? The mathematicians are going to tell you you can take the data and you can get all sorts of variables, you can get means and, and, and go back to that. Uh, sure, but I, I like to keep stuff simple. So what I think to myself is better than do that. I just I kind of eyeball it. And I, I, I take that red line and to be honest, I shift it around. And it kind of settled on 12. And what am I seeing there? Okay, below 12 has given me some opportunities. The first day was back in 98. Now, I suppose the question is, when did you buy in that window of opportunity there when it was sitting at, at below the 12 PE? In truth, that's not really the huge deal. You bought value, and maybe it dripped down a bit post when you had purchased that value. But nonetheless, it can tell you in that window. Maybe you bought Billiton at, at 32 and it dropped to 30. Not lacquer, but big picture, not the end of the world. Uh, another little peak below which we can see here in uh, mid-2003, and we can see another one a drop down here during 2007, uh, another one at that point, and you can see it corresponds with that price collapse, and then obviously with the global financial crisis, a huge opportunity of buying here. Now, that is late 2008 to mid-2009, in fact, running to August 2009. Make no mistake, that was a courageous place to be looking to buy. Investing is often about being courageous. Buying when everyone says the world is ending. What we can also see, and it's an important point, is and let's look at this drop off right here in the middle where suddenly the PE collapses. That's because a new earnings has come out. Bulletin released results and you can see the drops. There's one there in August 2000. There's uh, another one there in, in August 2001. Uh, another there, big one there. You can see those drops as the earnings come through and the market says, okay, new price earnings because remember, price changing every day, earnings changing every six months. And in truth, results just come out saying that, you know what, Billiton's at 300 odd, but it's dropped down again. It's on that red line. I then do a, what I would call a high range and at that point it comes in at around about the 18 and a half or 19 level. And what that then says to us is that the mid-range is, is going to be a low of, of 12, a high of, well, let's call it 18 and a half, because it's a mid-range mid of about 15. So you've got your absolute cheap areas, and then you've got your kind of mid-ranges. I'll be honest, I'm comfortable to buy if we're below the mid-range. So a quick look at Billiton tells me price earnings below 15, I'm comfortable buying Billiton for my long term, Death to us part, income-focused portfolio. I'm comfortable with buying Billiton. A couple more things. Do we sell when it goes above? No, I don't. Why? This is my long term. When do I sell Billiton? When, when this is a stock that I simply no longer want to own because I think the commodity boom is over and, and, and you know, no longer applicable. I think that we're no longer going to be using commodities. No idea what we will be using, but you get the picture. Uh, I also would, you know, if I decide that perhaps I prefer Anglo to Billiton, I need a fundamental change in my reason behind liking Billiton, my reason behind having Billiton on my, on my investment radar. So I'm not looking to be a seller in this space unless fundamentals change more than price. So I'm not so worried about price earnings in terms of selling. I also have, in, in a, in a long-term death loss part portfolio, I will have uh, six or seven shares. So what I might find is that I've got some money to, to invest. I want to buy some long-term shares. I'll go and check all six or seven and see if any of them are in that zone of, of price earnings, which is saying it's certainly the bottom half of cheapness. And if none of them are, then I'll stand back and say, well, let's check again in, in a month or three months when more results have come out. Check those numbers as they come through. It gives me broader opportunity. So I'm not forced. I'm not saying I have to buy a bulletin. I'm saying I've got a little more cash. I want to invest it into my death to us part. If you're starting a portfolio, then pick a couple of stocks that you would like to have in that portfolio and monitor them until they get into that position. As I said earlier, in many cases, it's not always about price. 
but you can see that buying in those cheap spots was typically not a bad place. Sometimes the bad place uh, things happen. Here you purchased there, nice, that uh, mid-2007 level. Um, massive run upwards, was looking absolutely spectacular, uh, and then it all collapsed down. Remember my focus here is income, long-term, death to us part portfolio. So just the one chart that I had there, some homework. As I said, first we need to identify those stocks. First we need to decide, and that's typically a more fundamental process in terms of you know, looking at economies. I mean, back to Billiton, I'm a believer in the, the, the super cycle that's happening in commodities. The cycle is going to 2020 or 2030. Um, Billiton's a top global player in that space, so I've identified them. Now I know which ones I like. Then it's a case of saying, well, now I'll wait for that PE range to be suggesting cheap, and then I go and look at it. As always, some buts, no presentation without some buts. Do you use it to sell? It depends on your methodology. As I said, I'm not using it to sell. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't. doesn't mean that you couldn't. It just means that simply I don't. Um, only really for long term. Certainly for trading. Forget about it. In fact, looking at that chart, not completely horrible. The problem is it doesn't say there isn't more downside. It just says that you know, you're buying it at a cheap price. So really for a long-term, and I say long-term income portfolio, i.e. where the dividends are the focus more than anything else. And as I said, we are looking at cheap, fancy word is value. There are other ways of determining that um, beyond just the PE. This is, as I said, right up front. Not the absolute be-all and end-all. This is just one of many concepts in that space. Some potential problems with it, it's a guideline, uh, no more than that. That's always the case with investing, but important to put that out there. And then what happens if there's a major shift happening? And, and let's, again, look at bulletin. Uh, let's go forward 20 years when the commodity bull is over. Um, maybe there's the demand for commodities absolutely falls off a cliff, and, and we hit a 20-year super cycle, but a bear cycle rather than a bull cycle in commodities. And that, unfortunately, is going to see a big shift in, in that PE. That range where we had on Billiton from sort of 12 is the cheap and 18 and a half is, an, is expensive might drop to 6 and 10. And unfortunately, in that space, that, that really needs to, 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 to be something which we pick up on the fly. We're not going to uh, wake up on a Monday morning and say, ah, it's all over, we know how to deal with it. That's a lot more challenging than, 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 than just that. So a quick recap, nice and easy way to see cheap versus expensive. Um, gives you a quick sort of ballpark telling you, yep, this is a good stock, this is a cheap stock we're sitting at at the moment. It is only part of the process. The other parts of the process is identifying that share up front. That, of course, very, very important in that as well. Ladies, gents, if there are any questions, I'll take some questions now. Uh, you can ask them in the question box, which will appear down in the bottom. Um, I will broadcast them to the audience as a whole and answer them. Uh, failing that, we can take them in an audio space. If you raise your hand or if you, in the question box, tell me you've got a microphone, we can try the question taking it in microphone. 